whole bunch of them, in fact. Um, in fact, you all can start coming on up and taking seats as, as I kind of introduce you all. Come on up, okay? Come on up, take your seats. Um, as you, as for those that are guests here with us, or, uh, with us for the first time today, uh, we have been preaching through a sermon series entitled "The Road to Recovery." And um, step one to the road to recovery is basically one is to realize that we all have hurts, habits, and hangups. Every single one of us, every single human being has hurts, habits, and hangups. It's part of the living in a fallen world. And so, for the first step is to actually admit it. Say, "Look, I realize I got a problem." The second step that we looked at was that God actually has the power to meet us at our hurt, habit, and hang-up, and to meet us at our point of need. And then last week, what we looked at was that Jesus Christ is that answer that we have to receive Him as our Lord and Savior in order to actually experience true recovery. Now, as I was thinking about this, and we had been talking uh, with Brandon and Chris um, about uh, Caring People Recovery Center, which is just up the road here in Bowling Green, we've been sitting there saying, you know what, what group models this process as well as they do in our area. And I said, so let's have an actual living testimony time of those who are walking through a process of recovery, who have actually acknowledged, look, I need help. And uh, Johnny has been a fantastic influence within our community for 19, 20 years, Caring People has been around. 20 years, Caring People, it started out as Caring People Recovery Ministry, now it's Caring People Recovery Center. But um, Johnny, I'm gonna turn it over to you and just let you guys have it. Uh, But as he's coming, let me uh, just say a word of prayer for them as, as we get started. Father, I do thank you for this time, and I thank you for this opportunity we have to, uh, to hear what you're doing in the life of Caring People Recovery Center, as well in the lives of these, these uh, clients that are here that have been searching you out and seeking you with all of their heart, soul, mind, and strength. And so, Father, open up our hearts, and may we, may we be inspired by what we hear today. And may it encourage us to be honest and transparent with our own issues that we all face and how we can turn to you and find true healing and true hope. So, Father, minister to us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Johnny? Good morning. Good morning. Okay. We're glad to be here this morning, and and we're here today to tell y'all thank you for giving. Okay? Thank you for giving to the Lord. Y'all know that song? Thank you for giving to the Lord. Thank you. And we're starting our, uh, we're, we're getting closer to 25 years down at 50 p.m., for y'all that don't know where we are, we're above the, the red light here in town, up on the other end of town, and uh, we're two blocks off the road over on Doyle Parker Avenue, and uh, anytime you got a few minutes want to drop by and see what goes on over there, we'd love to have you. And this morning, we're going we're gonna to have some guys here that has graduated. I just had a lady come up and hug me and said she graduated that thing 20 years ago. Where is she at? 20 years ago. It just goes to prove one thing. She worked a program. She's sitting in this church this morning doing what she's supposed to. When you do that, you go, you're going to make it, okay? And, and God gave me a scripture about 23 years ago when we started this, and, and it still works today. You know, His Word never changes. It's always the same. And it says, Then the king shall say unto them on the right, Come, you who are blessed by the Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. And here we go. This is CPM, and this is a lot of you folks here. I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I had no home and you visited me. I was naked, and you gave me clothes. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. 
And the first guy that's, that's going to speak this morning, we actually got him out of the jailhouse. They had, uh, his life had just, it became a jailhouse. And uh, we went down and picked this guy up and, and what a story he's got today. And, and you know, this morning I got up really early. I, I, I was a farmer, so I still can't sleep. I, I don't know. I keep asking God, why can't I sleep like everybody else? But I get up very early in the morning, and, and this morning I got up, and, and I drink my coffee, and then I have my quiet time. And I was, I was praying for those folks that went through the hurricane. And 17 people, or 19 I believe now, 19 people they found dead. Houses destroyed, lives destroyed, but most people are alive. And I looked up some statistics, and in 2017, in 2017, two, an average of 175 to 200 people die a day on Oprah Woods. 115 on man-made pills, 115 a day, every day, seven days a week. You know what that's like? That's like a 737 crashing every day in America. Think about that. What, what do you think would happen in the world, in our airlines, if a jet crashed every day and killed 175 to 200 people? What do you think America would be doing? We'd be up, we'd ground everything, we'd be up in arms, we would be fighting to stop. And you know what's horrible about this? The average age is from 12 to 35 years old. Our young people, our future is dying on drugs. If you figure that up, that is 6,500 people a year dying on opiates. 6,500 a year. They predict by 2020, opiates will be killed over 1 million people in America by 2020. That's horrible. It's an epidemic, folks. And uh, I don't know. The only, answer, the, the only answer I know is called Jesus Christ. Beyond that, there is no hope for addiction. We all, we're, listen, we're all, we're all addicted to something. We're all addicted to something. What are you addicted to? You know what addiction is? It's something that you'll give up everything you got for. Do you know that? You'll give up your family. You'll give up your house. You'll give up your land. You'll give up your farm. You'll forgive up your cows. You'll give up your business. That's addiction. And I, I decided one day I'd rather be addicted to Jesus than anything else. Okay? And, and with that, Billy Tao, come on, buddy. <laughs> well, I told myself I'd be, um, well, I'll be fine up here, but I'm scared to death. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing, right? Because... Um, you know, if I, if I came up here full of myself, and, and you wouldn't hear the message God wants to bring this morning. Um, Mickey Evans, a friend of mine who, who, who's no longer with us, told me one time that, and he's, he's the founder of Dunklin. Uh, he's a great man and very wise. And he told me a long time ago, he says, if you're going to be dumb, you, gotta, you better be, if you're going to be dumb, you better be tough. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm dumb. <laughs> and if you're not tough, you will be tough when you get done. So um, I don't want to talk a lot about my addiction. I mean, y'all have heard the story. I, I, I will paint a small picture for you, for, for, for you, for you, you people. Um, I was a mess. Um, at age 17, I was completely full-blown addicted. Um, I was the guy you locked your car when you went to the store because of me. You know, I was the reason you made sure your door was locked when you went, when you went to work. Um, if, it was, if it wasn't uh, bolted down, I would steal it. You know? and, and, that, and it wasn't me. It was my addiction. You know? and, it, and it had taken me that low. You know? Um, and I didn't know what to do. You know, you, you could ask any addict, um, a full-blown addict in America today, take them to the side and have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with them, and, and I promise you that they don't like the way they're living. They, they want to change, they just don't know how, you know. And they think they know how, that, but um, it requires a lot more than, than maybe they're willing to give up. 
and I, and I, and I was that unfortunate soul. Um, and like I said, I, uh, now that you, and I only paint that picture so, so God can be glorified in what he's done in my life. Um, I started off going, I started off at a, I've been to numerous rehabs, uh, facilities. Uh, there's, there's pretty ones where they put bracelets on your wrists <laughs> and put you in a cage. I've been to facilities like that. And, um, but the, the ones that I went into that, that tried to help me, um, surrender, the word surrender comes to mind, you know, and surrender to me was an ugly, ugly word. Because I thought I had to give up. I had to give up me, my life, you know. And, uh, and, and the first rehab I went into, I was willing to give up the, the painful stuff. I was willing to give up the drugs and the alcohol, right? That's easy to give up. Who, who wants that? You know, I can give God the, the, the areas of my life that were painful. But um, I didn't want to give him me. And so my first rehab center I went to, I, I gave up. I, I was willing to give up the alcohol. No, no, I was willing to give up the drugs. I wasn't willing to give up the alcohol. And so I left that program and I continued to drink. Because alcohol wasn't my problem, right? It was just the drugs. You know? See, alcohol wasn't even my problem either. I was the problem. But uh, it, was, it, was, it was a process. And God was walking me through that process. So I gave up, I gave up the drugs, but I wasn't willing to give up the, uh, the drinking and the partying. And so I left that place. And, 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 and it wasn't very long that I was right back in the same mess doing the drugs. You know? So then I said, hey, maybe I got a problem with drugs. So I came back. And I said, hey, okay, I will, I'll give up the drugs and the alcohol. Whew. This stuff's painful, man. You know, but the problem was still me, and I wasn't willing to give up me. You know? and, 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 and because of that, because of that I, I, I went on a long, long road of pain. Uh, and then finally, and finally I, was, I was, like Johnny said, I was in, in jail about to go back to prison. I was in a, little, in a county jail in Palm Beach. And I and, and, uh, and, and I'd asked God into my heart. He was right there knocking the whole time. He never left me. He never left me. I just, I just didn't, I wasn't, I, I did not want to give up me. I didn't want to surrender, you know, and God had so much in store for me and I couldn't see it. I was so blind. See, God won't give it to you before. And that's what I was wanting. I was wanting him to, to, to give me all those great feelings and, and all the blessings. And, 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 and then it would be easy to surrender, right? You know, he wanted me to surrender first, you know, and, and it took me, it took me and my addiction and thank God for my addiction. Thank God for my addiction, you know, because if it wasn't for my addiction, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have surrendered. I'd, I'd still been living like a heathen out there, a ch chasing, chasing the almighty dollar, try, trying to get ahead, and, 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 he and headed straight for hell, you know? But, but, but thank God for the thorn in my side, you know? Because His grace is sufficient, you know? And, 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 and I was in a jail cell in Palm Beach, and, uh, and I hit my knees, and I said, God, whatever you want to do, I'll do it. Because pain is, pain is a good mentor. And it, and it, <laughs> it brought me to my... And, and it wasn't... It was like the next day, Karen people showed up, and we had an emergency court date, early, early plea hearing, and they, and they drove me to Karen people. You know, and, I, and I stayed there for three years. You know, I, I went through their program, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, and God had more, more for me. And I, and, uh, and I wanted, you know, it wasn't easy. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I wanted, you know, logic in the world was telling me, go, it's good, go on, go on back out there and chase it. Satan will use any avenue he can, won't he? And, and, he, and he put a lot, a lot of temptation in front of me. And I thank God that I didn't, I didn't get sub, subdue to that because if I did, I wouldn't have what I have today. And I am so blessed. Um, and so I stayed there for two and a half more years. Uh, and God allowed me to, to, to work there, to uh, run the kitchen, cook food, drive the bus. And thank you so much, Steve, for coming and getting the guys whenever I called him. You know, and, and, and y'all, you guys are awesome. You know, whenever, see, uh, I drove the bus and I, and so every Sunday I had to drive them to church. And uh, sometimes I wanted to go home and visit my, my, my mother, and, uh, and Steve was right there always to come get uh, the group whenever we called. And that's, you know, what a blessing. And um, so, I, so, I, so I stayed. I stayed for three years and, um, and really learned how to give him my heart and really learned that he has so much for me, you know. See, the drugs and the alcohol, I was just, see, the problem was me. The problem was me. I, uh, I didn't like the way I felt. I didn't like what was going on inside, and I thought I could, I could, I could, I could drink from the world's cup and, and be satisfied, and I couldn't, you know. And, and then finally, I, I surrendered, and then God says, "Bam! Now I can work with you." And um, he, 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 and my heart's desire was a family, and and I and I met the love of my life, Sari, and uh, we we're married today. And, and then, you know, I I had given up the fact that I would ever have children, but God saw better. You know, God saw I'm not too old. <laughs> and uh, last year, uh, Jeremiah was born. And he's 10 months old. 
And and he didn't stop there. Three, Jeremiah was three months old, uh, and I came home from work, and Sarah goes, guess what? I go, what? She goes, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I, oh, you should have seen my face during the headlights. But anyway, so we're going to have another little girl. She'll be here in January. Her name's going to be Savannah Sue. And I am, I am, I am so... I, God had so much for me, and I was so blind, you know, and I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that I finally said, yes, Lord. And, and, it's, and, and, you know, it's because of people like you that never gave up, that prays for us. I know there are people in this church right now that prays for caring people ministry every day, that, that come down there and donate their time, uh, their, their resources, and, 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 help, and, help, and help us, you know, or, 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 I'm, or I might not be standing here today. So I, I want to say thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, my name is Trevor. Um, I came all the way down here from Colorado. I had to, like Billy, I was, uh, I knew I liked drugs and alcohol by the time I was 17. I was actually a runaway at 16, um, and I was chasing uh, drugs and alcohol, you know, all from about 15 till 22. Um, I had my first son when I was 22, or my only son, and then I had a daughter, but um, I quit everything. And uh, when I was 22, and then when I was about 29, um, I started using again. And I picked up right where I left off. I was trying to hide it. Um, I was using different, different drugs at the time, so it wasn't as noticeable. Um, but, you know, that eventually ripped everything away that I had, literally um, everything I ever worked for. Um, and, you know, I was thinking the other day, I was having a conversation with um, I believe it was Chris, about planning. And I've literally, I don't think in my whole life I've actually had a plan. I just kind of went with um, what was going on. You know, my son was born, so I had, a, I had a buck up, and I got a job, two jobs, three jobs to take care of my family. Um, so there wasn't really any plan. I just did what I had to do. Um, like I said, I'm from Colorado, and coming, I had to plan to come all the way out here halfway across the country to get away from where I was and what I was doing. Um, and it wasn't the people I was hanging out with. It was just me. Um, I was, you know, I really didn't have any friends I hung out with. I was just um, in such a hole that I was just chasing um, the depression and the loneliness away. Like I said, everything was taken away from me because of what I allowed Satan to do. Um, but because of Caring People's Ministries, I am now, um, I've been in the program for about six months. I'm working now, um, and the plan that I made in Colorado, which was come to Florida, go to CPM, um, go through the program, get a job, get a vehicle, and go back to Colorado, right? Um, and I thought that was going to happen in about four months. It's been six months. Uh, still don't have a vehicle, but <laughs> everything is on God's timing. I've learned to be really patient, um, and that's that's another thing is I used to pray for patience, and uh uh, he doesn't just give it to you, he will teach it to you, which is a very hard lesson to learn, especially for someone who's as hard-headed as me. Um, but, you know, God has blessed me with Johnny and, and Chris um, and Brandon. Everybody at Caring People um, has just been really uplifting. It's been a crazy road, but a good one. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing great because of these people. Thank you. Wow, this is pretty cool, actually. Uh, my name is Michael. Um, I'm at Caring People. Uh, I'm going to make it really quick so we can get through everyone. Two minutes, they told me. Um, I battled meth addiction for the last four years, three years. Um, I came back to CPM because I had been there before because I wanted accountability, and I was just uh, fed up with always doing the same old thing. My soul was pretty much dead. Uh, my relationships were shot. And uh, I just wanted to change. Um, I always looked at people in recovery and never, never understood how they ever had long-term sobriety. It didn't make sense to me. It wasn't real because of their obsession to use was constant all the time. It's like being hungry and wanting to eat. The same thing with using drugs. Um, when I came back, I don't know what happened, but the obsession and desire to use methamphetamines was lifted. And the only thing that I can say is that is Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is real. I feel like I've been healed. The power is, is just, it's amazing, and I never thought this would happen. 
And I, I really am grateful to CPM and I'm grateful to these four people right here. They're my support and I really love them and I thank you guys. And uh, that's all I got, thanks. Boy, that's a hard act to follow. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Trevor. Um, I've got three things I'm grateful for I want to talk about, and uh, I'm grateful to be here. There's two reasons I'm here that I'm grateful for. By a show of hands or an amen, who's grateful for mercy? Another time, who's grateful for grace? Those are the two reasons I'm here. Uh, my name's Austin Ward. I'm 32 years old. I'm from Claremont, Florida. A little bit about my past. Um, my grandpa's the pastor of the largest church in Jacksonville, Florida, called First Coast Baptist Church. Um, I grew up in church, and my dad was a youth pastor. He, uh, we went to Orlando about 15, 20 years ago, and he started a church called Avalon Church. Um, he resigned after about 10 years there. That church currently has uh, over 2,000 members, um, and we started that church in our house. Um, currently, he's a pastor of a church called Discovery Church in Orlando that has over 4,000 members. Um, and I tell you all that because I've lived my whole life in a fishbowl. Um, would any of y'all believe that there's people sitting here that are terrible people? Um, well, I'm one of them. Uh, <laughs> um, over the years, living in a fishbowl, I learned how to master proper Christian image management how to look right all the time. And that led me to being phony all the time. And it led me to rebel in the worst possible ways you can think of. Um, now, I'm building the strongest relationship I've ever had with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm just thankful for all of y'all, and I love all of y'all. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace and joy over this church. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Benjamin Vargas. I'm 17 years old, and I'm from Tampa, Florida. My story begins when I was born, pretty much. My mom was addicted to heroin and cocaine, so, of course, coming out of the womb, I was addicted to heroin and cocaine. Um, my father wasn't in my life for most of my life. Um, I knew him when I was two years old, but he was a gang member. He dealt with drugs and everything. He was in all that type of stuff, so um, when I was two years old, he... A man came up to him and tried to kill him, but my dad stabbed him in the arm, and of course, that brought him to jail. They found out he didn't have his papers or whatever, so he was sent to prison for about 11 years of my life. And then when he got out of prison, he was deported back to Mexico. So growing up, I thought that was normal, um, you know, not, not, not everyone having a dad, and until I was about, you know, like five or seven years old, something like that. But... Um, I've had a lot of insecurities in my life. Uh, my mom died when I was about 10 years old. Um, she had a rare blood disease um, from the drugs that she took. So that caused a lot of pain in my life. And I started cutting. I started using drugs. I started um, um, doing a bunch of things just to forget all about that. So um, about a few years ago, I, <clears throat> I was, got really drunk. I went to go pick up my friend to, um, to go get some, you know, weed to get more drugs and everything. And I crashed, almost killed him and me, going about 80 miles an hour on a left-hand turn. I mean, like, that's pretty much stupid. It's a 17-year-old thing to do. It's completely retarded. But, um, <laughs> you know, that, that probably that night, I probably realized I had a problem. I was like, you know, like, I can't be here. And, um... um my grandma, who's raised me most of my life, sacrificed everything for me and my brother. She took, I was taken away from my mom about eight years old. She raised me and my brother, um, been living with her. But that night, I realized I can't be doing this anymore. I can't, you know, I can't be doing all these drugs and everything. So um, we went back to my house. Me and my grandma had a long talk. But, you know, even though I realized I was doing wrong, I, like, I still wanted to do more. Um, so my uncle, who's been my father figure most of my life, he um, 
He's been trying to make me into the man and that into a good man of God and everything. So I um the reason that I'm here with these people is because about a week ago I took one of his trucks. Um I was high on my munchies, went to the store, um, got a few chips and everything, came back. My grandma called me realizing that realizing that I wasn't in my room and I freaked out, turned and um turned too late, hit a tree, came here. Um, you know, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm really nervous, so I'm probably not making any sense. But um, um, even though I hate being at this rehab center, everyone probably knows this. I've been talking to a few people, Connie right here, Riley right here. They've been helping me with a few things. I've been telling them about my life and everything. They're wonderful people. And these men right here have accepted me. Have accepted me. Um, they're super nice to me. Um, so hopefully I can get right with the Lord again. And yeah, so thank you. Wow, this is pretty nervous, but um, I'm Rob. I'm from Fort Lauderdale. Um, let's see where to begin. I grew up in Boca Raton. And my sister came through here, CPM, about three years ago. My aunt also, she came kind of like Billy, you know, decided to stay and become staff. My story is a little like Billy's. I went through a Christian program three years ago, but I wasn't ready to give up pot. You know, I looked at pot, you know, never hurt me, never got me in trouble. So I had reservations in my head. I didn't want to give up pot. And that's what, you know, led me back to the opiates. That's my main drug of choice, you know, that I've been battling for about 10 years now. So, yeah, so I came here and, you know, I just, I don't have that reservation anymore. You know, I've given it all to God. Um, God has revealed to me that no program is going to change me, but being redeemed by God is what I base my hope and change on. And, you know, just the love and relationship with Jesus is what's going to change me. And I'm just going to keep it short and sweet. Thank you. Good morning. Well, I know about half of this church, so my name is Connie. I'm Connie Gilliard, and most of you know me as Connie Gilliard Wilbanks. And I was born here in Wachula, raised here in Wachula. Um, my addiction started after my grandfather died. I think back to really what started and what, why I started hating God. Um, I, was, I hated God. Um, I was mad that he took him, at a, and I was very young. Um, that was where my journey started with addiction. Um, from there, my addiction grew and grew. Started out with cigarettes and went to alcohol, then went to pills, you name it, on um, methamphetamine, cocaine, and finally at the end of my ropes on um, prescription pills. Um, I got very addicted to Xanax. Um, overdosed many times. Um, I'm very lucky to be alive. Um, without God and Jesus, I wouldn't be standing here. I asked him when I woke up, my last overdose, which is my last overdose, my last everything, I'm done. Um, I asked him why. I was sort of mad that he kept me alive. And because I wanted to go see my dad and my grandpa. And he told me he wasn't finished with me yet. He had a lot of great things for me. And you know what? I know he does. I don't know what they are yet. I know that I'm here. And this is my third go around. This is my last go around. I think that three is a really a great number because you got Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit. So I know this is it for me. And I'm... Um, I like helping others. Um, I did graduate from the program, and I taught in the program um, back when I was in my 40s. And, um, and it worked for a while, and then life got a little tough, and I went back out there, and my husband was an addict um, on and off, and um, an addict's an addict. But um, I can now say that I'm a recovering addict. Um, you know, I wake up in the morning and I can be sit here and be truthful with I was really shaken this morning. I didn't want to come here because I know so many people. And I'm like, well, they already know everything about me anyway. So, um, but it was like, okay, God, can you give me a fake 
calm down pill. <laughs> and he said, everything's going to be okay. And it is. Um, everything's great. This place, CPM, has saved. Well, God saved my life. But God directed me um, to CPM. I've known the Parkers all my life. Um, I've known Mark. Mark's a great person. Um, he's let me come back in. Um, he didn't have to let me come back in, but this is my third and my last time. And um, I like giving to others. And I like helping others. And I really like the young people. People like them that come in. And I've seen him, you know, he'll, he'll be 14 days that he's been here this coming up Thursday. And I've seen him just grow in those two weeks. And um, we have some other ones here that's grown too, like Riley. And um, she's a real big blessing to me. But everybody's a blessing here. We, we're a family. Um, nothing's perfect. We're like brothers and sisters, so sometimes we argue. Sometimes we do things we're not supposed to do. But all in all, God has our back. Um, I'm grateful to be alive, and I'm grateful to be here. And God bless every one of you. Good morning. My name is Whitney. I'm from Fort Myers. Um, my addiction pretty much started when I was 12. I did anything I could to get away from myself. It didn't work out because wherever I ran, there I was. So I've been to a few rehabs before, but I always, like Rob said, had reservations on certain things that I would not give up. Um, today, God, me, God brought me to my knees like a year ago. And he just shown a lot of things to me. Um, I was not happy. I was pure misery. I was depressed. There was nothing that could help me. You know what I mean? So I am just grateful to be here. I'm grateful to know these people because these people really care. And they'll do anything they can to help you. Um, God's not done with me. He saved me a lot in this life. And I'm just grateful for what he has in store for me. Okay, I'm here to disprove this theory of saving the best for last. Um, <clears throat> yeah. My name is Marissa. I'm 25 years old, originally from Lakeland. Um, my addiction started pretty early. I started drinking when I was nine, and I started smoking cigarettes and using drugs when I was 12. Um, there was a lot of chaos in my house. There was a lot of abuse and alcoholism. And the way I dealt with it was by doing the same thing, drugs and alcohol, and a dysfunctional, chaotic lifestyle. And I just carried that all through my life, and it kept getting worse and worse. Um, I do owe a huge thank you to this church. Uh, without you guys, I would not be here. I came to CPM the end of May, so I've been there almost five months now. Um, basically what led me up to that point without getting into everything was I'd been going here for a couple of years. I was baptized and became a member of this church in December of 2016 and still on drugs, still doing the same thing, but trying to have a relationship with God, but I really didn't know how to. I was really caught up in the rules and regulations, honestly. But um, it really created this internal battle within me because I really wanted to have a relationship with God, and I wanted what I saw that you guys had, but I really didn't know how to get it, and I could not stay clean and sober. Um, basically, the point that my life got to... Um, I thought I had everyone fooled on the outside. The outside, everything looked good because I was working 60 hours a week. I was paying my bills for the most part. And all that looked like it was under control. But all I was doing was drinking and getting high. And I got to the point when really I just constantly thought about dying. I had no plan. I thought that my life was not worth anything. I was going to live my life high and miserable and die high and miserable. But CPM, one of the many, many things they've taught me is that that is one of Satan's lies. That is not true. 
God does have a plan for my life. He does want to use me for his glory. But anyway, coming here, I was just literally all day, every day, from when the time I woke up in the morning to when I got home at night and finally passed out, I was drinking or using something. And I finally... I don't know exactly what happened to me. It had to have been God, because I know it wasn't me. But one Wednesday morning, I woke up, and every time before I'd been offered rehab many times, um, I was in drug court for a year where I was forced to be sober for a year because I was drug tested and I hated it. All I thought about was getting high. But during all of that, I was always like, I can handle this. I can do it by myself. I don't have a problem, whatever. But I woke up that morning towards the end of May, and that spirit of rebellion or pride or whatever it was in me broke. I finally got sick and tired of being sick and tired and just wasting my life. So I did use that day, but I came to church that night and I talked to Scott and Christy. I had an individual conversation with both of them and I told them, I need help, like right now. And I was desperate to get help. And that was on Wednesday and God opened up all the doors and on Monday I walked into CPM. And I really owe you guys a huge thank you because the church is sponsoring me to be there. But this has been the best thing I've done, honestly. This place is saving my life, and it's giving me a future to actually look forward to. And like Mike said, sometime over the past couple of months, the desire to drink and use left me. God took that away from me. It's no longer a struggle that I think about and obsess about constantly which it's never been like that my whole life. Even when I was clean for a year, that's all I ever thought about. And now I can honestly say that my hope is in Jesus Christ and he's changing my life. And thank all of you for being here. Thank you all for allowing me to be where I am. And we love you guys. You know, one of our major problems in life is fear. And you know, fear is an awesome, it's a horrible thing. And you know, when Jesus, when he rose from the, the, the grave, he pulled the lines, all of his claws out and pulled his teeth out. So all he does is just roar. He can't hurt you. He can gum you and kiss you. But there's no way he can hurt you. But Whitney this morning made a, a great stand. When I came in, she said, Papa, I can't speak. She said, I'll either throw up or faint. <laughs> One or the other. And I thought, you know what? This, now is the time to stand and face the devil. She had something to say this morning that somebody needed to hear. Okay? And the devil says, I... Run, run, run. That's all he ever hollers is run. What have you got to say? You're nothing but an old drug addict. But you know what? Jesus loves her. He died for her just like he died for all of us. And we're going to overcome our fears at CPM. And we're going to learn to face the devil. Because as long as we run, we'll never win. Okay? And again, we want to thank all of y'all for letting us be here and be a part of this this morning. And we love you guys, and God bless this church. I remember this church when it was a little wooden building right out here. Many of you don't remember that. And it was it, I'd come over here on revivals, and old Vance Havner was preaching, if y'all remember Vance. And I'm telling you what, you had to help him on the stage and he just couldn't get his hat off and lay it down. But, buddy, when he got up to this pulpit, the fire came out. And uh, thank you all, and God bless you. <laughs>